Um, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I think we all have been going through this uh, very horrible time uh, with the pandemic of COVID-19. Um, in a way, we are now obviously um, making best of uh, the time. Uh, obviously, I'm working four days in, four days out. So it's my four days off now. So I'll be back on Friday at Heartlands. Uh, but uh, thanks to Taya for arranging this, arranging this because it keeps me busy as well to kind of you know, prepare presentations and do other uh, research stuff and stop me from getting rusty. So a bit of uh, background. Uh, so I work in Heartlands and uh, Goodhoff Hospital. So I'm one of the interventionists here and I'm one of the CTO operators. Uh, I started in 2014 and started doing two, uh, CTOs from 2015. Um, we have been privileged because uh, uh, we had support from uh, Professor Nakamura from Japan. So he works in New Tokyo Hospital. So I met him when I was working in uh, Italy because he used to come uh, to Dr. Colombo's unit in Italy to do some CTO cases. And that's how the collaboration started. And since then, uh, I think he's been coming to our unit almost every year and he's come sort of over six times and done several cases and uh, taught us through his technique uh, of CT angioplasty. So we have been mainly uh, following Japanese way of uh, doing PCI. Although I will come to the <clears throat> hybrid as well because we have adopted in the last uh, two, three years and uh, we now call ourselves as best of both worlds. Uh, we have a kind of took the benefit of both. Um, so that's the background of my um, my practice and uh, where I'm based. Um, if I go to the uh, topic itself, hmm, it's not going forward yet. I think it's okay now. <clears throat> so as I said to you earlier, if you have any questions in between, please uh, pitch in and ask me. I'm very happy to keep this interactive rather than just me speaking. And obviously I'll take any questions at the end as well. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start the presentation. So as you all know, CTO angioplasty is escalating globally and not only in the UK. Um, and that's due to the uh, improvement in the device technologies, thanks to you all who are, you know, you are do doing a great job by distributing one of the best products in the CTO angioplasty or the leaders called Asahi products. Um, and also there's a lot of improvement in the technique itself of the angioplasty <coughs> in CTO. Uh, so all this has led to a global escalation. And now probably, as you know, when I started uh, uh, training and in intervention, there was no CTO angioplasty at all. There used to be like ad hoc CTO PCI, there were no dedicated operators. Now we have a dedicated operators every every hospital. Uh, so CT angioplasty is kind of uh, escalating and it will continue to grow. Um, CT angioplasty, uh, if you go back to the, you know, probably in early 2000, it was very restricted uh, to certain operators in the world. Uh, they used to do procedures in their country and travel across. So we used to have a lot of uh, Japanese operators coming and uh, teaching us uh, angioplasty or just doing angioplasty rather than teaching. And now we have more operators, which is good for patients and the hospital. Uh, because you know, if you imagine uh, the days when we were doing left main stem angioplasty, it was restricted only to certain operators and certain centers. And that didn't serve very well for the rest of the uh, UK population. And then we kind of uh, started doing left main angioplasty. Now every unit does left main angioplasty. The thing that grow, and it is important for patients uh, to have service locally rather than they have to travel elsewhere to have their arteries opened up. Uh, so thanks to all the innovations uh, <clears throat> from the device companies and obviously the technique. So yeah, can you all see my screen? Hello. Yes. Yes. Oh, you all say yes. perfect. Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> so, the, the, if you go back to the uh, the traditional Japanese way, I mean, these are all the big names. Uh, so the first one on the left side is a uh, uh, doctor or Professor Nakamura, uh, who's been my mentor, and then you have Doctor Kato, uh, who's an, who invented Corsair, uh, the one we use a lot now, and then uh, we have got Saito and uh, uh, Professor um, Ocha. You all know all these four names. Uh, so these are so leaders in uh, CT angioplasty. Or they started all these uh, new techniques, kind of uh, reverse cart and everything. Um, and then obviously, after a while, we then had some new uh, techniques being invented by uh, Professor Colombo, who had a privilege uh, working with him. 
for a year in Italy. And uh, on the other side is Craig Thompson. So they invented something called a star technique. I think uh, most of you know what it is. Essentially, it is like your ADR, but basically no control at all. You just basically take a knuckle and just push it and hope it that comes to the uh, end of the artery in a true lumen. And you have got no control where it comes into the true lumen. You just basically knuckle and push. So this was invented kind of by Dr. Uh, Pro, uh, Professor Colombo, and then obviously modified and uh, we have come to now ADR. Um, so it started in Italy, this uh, star technique, and that kind of uh, gave more uh, momentum and uh, modification to currently what we call as a hybrid PCR, which is mainly adopted by uh, uh, Americans and a few very uh, um, most centers in Europe these days. Obviously, you all know the big names here, uh, Simon Walsh, Colum Andrati, and uh, uh, Bill Lombardi from uh, States. And obviously, one, one picture is missing, and we can't, we can't not miss this picture, and that's uh, James Pratt. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, we have come a long way from Japanese, uh, then to the uh, crude of star technique, and now to hybrid PCI. Um, there are pros and cons with each of these approach. Um, I'll tell you, so conventional CT or PCI essentially is the uh, Japanese way of doing things, which is basically anti-grade wire escalation, parallel wire, retrograde wire escalation. I'll come to all those uh, slowly. But the good thing about uh, Japanese technique, it's very elegant and aim to restore vessel anatomy. The, what I mean by that is when you do this knuckling um, in the arteries, you're essentially uh, altering the architecture of the, uh, of the vessel. So you're making the vessel at the end like a, like a sausage. Uh, it's a huge, uh, big ectatic segment. Whereas with the Japanese technique, it's very elegant and it, uh, it aims to restore the vessel anatomy because you're not doing much dissection um, in the vessel. And hence, once you complete the procedure, you don't have to come back and do optimization because if you look at the hybrid angioplasty, if you knuckle from both sides and you deploy the stent and the stents uh, are in the hematoma segment. So there's a lot of hematoma behind the stents. And let's say at, at two months later when the hematoma goes away, the stents can be floating. So a lot of the time they bring back and optimize the stent. And that is not needed in Japanese way of uh, doing uh, CT angioplasty. As I said, no, no need for stent optimization. Procedures can be long <clears throat> and may have a longer learning curve because you have to feel the lesion, you know, uh, learn the parallel wire, all these techniques takes time as compared to uh, hybrid PCI. Um, so what are the advantages of hybrid CT or PCI? It's basically, it's short to the procedure duration. Um, I, I think one of the main aim of hybrid CT or PCI is to kind of stop people doing three, four hours of angioplasty on, on a patient, uh, putting them through a huge amount of radiation. Um, solution to previously untreatable lesion. So for example, in Japanese uh, way of doing angioplasty, what we have felt is that if the vessel is heavily calcified, uh, then it's very difficult to negotiate through these calcified lesion with uh, even uh, you know, the stiffest wire we have. And that's where sometimes it takes the uh, route of exiting the vessel and causing perforation. But you know, with the CTO, uh, in hybrid CTO PCI, these uh, um, uh, some of the techniques they have uh, designed, like you know, uh, modifying the proximal cap uh, and negotiating through the calcium, basically bypassing the calcium into the submetimal space, uh, has given uh, solutions to previously uh, uh, lesions which were not treatable through. And the procedure skills are because you, you know, show people how to knuckle and once you start knuckling, it's very easy. Knuckling is not that difficult. Once you do a few cases, you'll probably know. So these are the kind of pros and cons of uh, uh, um, Japanese and uh, hybrid CT or PCI approach. So if I <clears throat> go to the conventional CT or PCI, so this is basically the, uh, the, the Japanese way of dealing with, you know, they have anti-grade wire escalation, they have a parallel wire, then they have a retrograde wire escalation, and then they have conventional reverse card, which I'll come to that later. Hybrid approach is basically ADR, knuckling, base, and side base. I, th I think you all have been uh, very familiar with this uh, terminology because I think you are supporting uh, a lot of courses in the UK, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, which adopts a uh, hybrid approach. So we have been very lucky because uh, we, as I said to you, I've been proctored mainly by uh, me and my uh, colleague, Mike Pitt. I've been uh, privileged um, to be proctored by uh, uh, Professor Nakamura. 
but having said that, we also adopt some of the hybrid uh, approaches in certain lesions. So in a way, we are lucky that we've got best of both worlds. Um, so 70% of the time we use Japanese way of doing it and 20 to 30% of the time we use a hybrid approach. Are you all okay so far with uh, what I've said? Yes, thank you. Yes, great. Perfect. <clears throat> right. So, so conventional CTO PCR has got all these. So the first three are um, uh, anti-grade. So fine channel crossing, uh, wire escalation and parallel wire. Then you've got uh, retrograde wire escalation and a conventional reverse card is, uh, is the retrograde approach. So if I go through all of this in terms of uh, cases, uh, an example, you'll understand. So anti-grade, uh, we have some questions. What is anti-grade angioplasty? Now, in Japanese term, there is nothing called an anti-grade case or a retrograde case. They kind of switch in between. So for example, you try anti-grade, you're not getting into the lumen, you made some progress, then you come retrograde, you finish the case. Uh, so Professor Nakamura's way of teaching is, look, there's something called anti-grade or retrograde. You could call some cases, yes, very likely you can open this by anti-grade. Some cases will need retrograde. So anti-grade is basically you're wiring the CTO from the front end. So proximal to distal, uh, you just pass a wire through, uh, through the lesion. So for example, if I show you this case, so this is a case of an LED uh, CTO. You can appreciate this uh, occlusion in the LED, as you all can see. I'm just pointing my, uh, can you see my pointer? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So essentially there's an occlusion there and a lady fills from the right corner tree here. So occlusion is this length, okay? Um, so essentially anti-grade is basically you're taking a wire and aim to enter and the, the true lumen after the lesion and that's called anti-grade angioplasty. It still requires a dual uh, uh, access because if someone is doing an angioplasty without, uh, if someone is doing a C2 angioplasty without a dual access, uh, it is not a good practice because you don't know where the wire goes. Now, what compels the operator to choose anti-grade as a first choice? So what makes me to say, okay, let's go for anti-grade for this case. It's basically the lesion uh, morphology. So if you've got a tapered proximal cap, which means you've got a, you've got a way into a lesion, um, or if it's a very short occlusion, or if you've got a good landing zone, then probably uh, you choose anti-grade approach as a first uh, choice or first approach. And also if you've got a bad collateral, so if you've got hardly any collaterals uh, or very, very tiny, very wriggly collaterals, then you can't do retrograde. Then you just have to rely mainly on your anti-grade uh, techniques. So this is what I mean by tapered tip. So for example, here, the, you could see a way, isn't it? There's a septal which is coming right down and there's a diagonal going up to the top. And in between those two, you see a little like a nipple uh, where you can poke the wire. So this is called the tapered tip. Whereas you got cases like this, which is called blunt cap. So where you don't know where to poke because it's like a, got a very ambiguous uh, a blunt cap. And a case is like this where you really don't know where the cap is actually because uh, you've got a lot of branches coming off. And uh, in these cases, it's very difficult to kind of identify where the cap is and to, to poke. <clears throat> so these kind of cases makes uh, anti-grade approach uh, unattractive. Um, then you have this uh, shorter occlusion. So for example, here, the occlusion is very short. That's all a very short occlusion. So these occlusions can be uh, negotiated easily with anti-grade approach. So in these cases, if a, someone takes a retrograde, it's not a good choice. You can re do this kind of 99% of the time you'll be successful with an anti-grade approach. And I said bad collateral channel. So for example, this patient has an occlusion of the LED and you could see there are collaterals from the right corner into the, uh, into the LED through the septal channels, but they are very, very small. And uh, in this case, we tried using retrograde. We could not get any of the retrograde channels. Off late, I'm doing something uh, slightly different. Um, and this has happened in the last five to six of my retrograde cases. And I've shared this experience with other CT operators. So what I do is I put the patient on a GT infusion. So when they come into the day case uh, for, the, for the procedure uh, at eight o'clock, I start them on a very small dose of GT infusion. So what it does is basically it, it uh, swells your collaterals nicely. And since last, since I've started doing it, all the five retrograde cases have been successful because I was able to enter the retrograde channel very easily because uh, the arteries are nicely swollen because of the GTN infusion. Um, 
so there are, sometimes you have got no retrograde option. So for example, this case, a patient has an occluded uh, LAD, that's the occlusion of LAD, and occluded right coronary, right coronary is occlu occluded. So if you want to go here, you don't have a retrograde option because if you want to open that LAD, you have to do only anti-grade, no matter how difficult that may look, but you've got no choice because here there are no collaterals to the, uh, to the other side or from the other side. So <clears throat> now coming to the types of anti-grade CTO PCI techniques. So as I said, there are uh, mainly three uh, from the Japanese approach. One is a fine channel tracking, then wire escalation, parallel wire, and then you have ADR, which is the uh, hybrid uh, CTO angioplasty. So if I show you a fine channel tracking, essentially what it means is a lot of people don't call this as a CTO. They call this as just a functional occlusion because there is a, a small channel connecting the proximal end to the distal end of the artery. All you have to do is access that little channel. So you just take a wire, like a slippery wire, like your fielded XTA or XTR, and just basically uh, traverse through the through the uh, functional occlusion. So it's called fine channel crossing. So if I show you a case here, for example, this is a case of an RCA CTO. Uh, if you look very carefully, there appears to be a, what you call like a small channel. Then you can appreciate that. Because here, the vessel is filling anti-gradely. So there's no retrograde injection here, as you can see. And when you inject from the anti-grade, it is filling, which essentially means there is probably flowing through that occlusion through a very, very fine channels which is why it's not filling the whole artery. It's filling probably uh, some segment after the occlusion because it's not big enough to take a lot of contrast to the uh, fill the distal vessel. So in this case, for example, that's a fielder XTA wire. <clears throat> so the Corsair. So all I'm doing is trying to uh, find the channel and the fielder XTA is so good. All it all you needed is just to kind of gently uh, uh, twist the wire and, and it'll find the way. So here it just went forward and then I confirmed uh, with the dual uh, the injection from the other side, make sure distally I'm okay. So here I was fine and I was able to finish the procedure. This is another case um, of a RCA CTO. Again here, can you appreciate there's a small channel here? So if I pause it at this uh, point here, can you see here? That's the channel. That's the right ventricular branch. And that's the channel. Can you see the channel? Let me appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, we can yeah. see it. So right. that is uh, a channel which you can easily access with just a filler XTI wire. Um, so that's what I did in this case. But in this case, slightly, the problem I had was because the side branch was coming right at the occlusion, every time you push a wire, it goes into the side branch. Um, every time I'm trying to negotiate a filler XTA into that little channel, it takes the more easier one, which is the uh, right ventricular branch. So in this case, I use this. This case was done only a, a month ago. Um, I use this. Have you heard this called Sasuke, which you guys distribute a lot? Yeah, yeah we, we've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a great case because essentially I parked the Sasuke right in the, uh, at the ostium of the right ventricular branch. And I've taken the second valve, which is that filler XTA. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to poke into the lesion. And you could see here, this is a nice picture. All I'm doing is I'm just accessing the channel. Can you see that? He just yeah. crossed. Yeah. Um, and then I was able to uh, check with the other side, make sure I'm in the true lumen and uh, finish the procedure with a, with a nice. Um, so this is a, uh, you know, a great technique using these uh, filler XT, uh, XTA wires. Unstable. Um, yeah, so it's a taper tip, uh, which is designed uh, to uh, access these small channels and it's also very hydrophilic. So next come to, let's come to wire escalation. So what is wire escalation? Essentially it means, so for example, you may have a lesion <clears throat> where you have some fine channel to enter the body of the lesion. So like here, which you take a filler XTA, but then you come with the most hard part of the CTO where it's more solid, where there are no fine channels. Then you need more probably a stiffer wire, which has got more meat at the tip, like Gaia or a Miracle or a Confianza. So then you take a, those wires and then uh, come to the other side and, and, and connect the two and finish the case. 
So if I show an example, this case again was done literally before the lockdown, literally the last case of my CTO before the lockdown, before we cancel all the electives. So this patient had a, a, a stent before and it was blocked, obviously it's an interest in CTO. And uh, as you can appreciate, there is a channel. Can you see there is, so the occlusion starts probably here, but then there is a little channel into the body. After this, there are no channels. Okay, so this is a classic case where I was able to enter that with the Fielder XTA, and that's the Corsair. Now, obviously, I came across a very hard lesion. So I tried with a Gaia 3, <clears throat> and I was stuck at that point. So I, there was no progression here. Every time I pushed the wire, it was knuckling or buckling because uh, the lesion was very hard. So then I took uh, your Confiance uh, Pro 12, which made some progress, but you could see it even it's kind of started uh, making no progress. And at this point, I took uh, the Hornet, <clears throat> which is the 14 gram wire from uh, Boston Scientific. And again, that started uh, making some progress, but kept buckling. Now I checked in the other angle and I was right at the center of the, uh, of the stent. So I was happy at this position. So I decided to take your Conquest, uh, which is a, a 20 gram wire or Astato, sorry, Astato, Astato wire. And uh, I was able to spin that wire. Uh, it needed that extra uh, push from a stiffer wire and it went in. <clears throat> at this point it was very interesting. The problem with the Astato wire, as you know, it's a 20 gram tip wire. And if I, if I use the uh, Astato to do the procedure, there's always a risk of distal wire perforation because it's too sharp at the end. So what I did was I couldn't advance the Corsair because it, the lesion was so calcific and fibrocalcific from the interest in occlusion. Even using an anchor balloon in the side branch, I could not spin the Corsair. So, but I had made a channel with the Astato. So what I did was I, uh, um, used a Fielder X, uh, FC wire and used that channel which I had made from the Astato uh, to enter the uh, distal, we'll see in a minute. <clears throat> and then I was able to finish the case uh, uh, in the end. The distal vessel doesn't look big, but it'll grow. It just uh, occlusion uh, had caused some spasm in the distal vessel. Sometimes you have a, uh, a lesion where you don't, you can't even enter the lesion with the filler XTA. You need something harder. So filler XTA won't even, uh, uh, you know, penetrate the cap. In which case, you need a, a stronger wire like Gaia three or a or a Confiance to enter. And uh, we all have this Gaia one two three. Uh, you all know this. Uh, it's a great wire, uh, which has got more control than got Miracle series, uh, which is less used these days. And then we got Confiance there. <clears throat> So if I show you, this is a case of another interest in CTO where I started off with a, a Gaia uh, two wire, but you could see the Gaia two was not making any progress on the left-hand screen. Then I took a Gaia three, which made some progress and uh, checking multiple angle and using a miracle as well. So that was a miracle wire. Um, I was able to enter the distal. So this is a nice case of wire escalation uh, using Gaia, start with Gaia two, then three, then miracle. And uh, we were able to finish the case. So we entered the distal true lumen <clears throat> and we had a good result in the end. So far, you all okay following what I'm saying? Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Sandeep, okay. when you use the Astato, how easy was that or difficult was it to control? Oh, uh, well, I think the problem is you can't control these wires. Uh, yeah. As it gets stiffer and stiffer, it just basically goes where it wants to go. You demonstrated in a wet model, I think, yeah. uh, in one of our courses where you asked me to wire the Gaia and then the Confianza. You had more control over Gaia, whereas Confianza just went wherever it wanted to go, yeah. which is why um, these kind of wires needs. Uh, what I learned from Dr. Nakamura is he said if you're taking a, a Confianza or anything higher, you have to do it in very, very short segments. So increment has to be a very short segment. You just can't push the wire. You just have to go like an inch by inch. And checking in, in multiple angle, make sure that you are in the architecture because in one angle, you look that you're, you're going in a right, right, right direction. But then if you look at the other angle, you are probably miles apart. So if you push, then you'll exit the vessel. So all he's saying is just to make a small increment uh, and then check in multiple angles. 
And when that part of the occlusion is over, when it's the difficult part is over, then change it to a much more friendly wire like a Gaia 3 or in Fielder FC, like I demonstrated in that case. Yeah. That's a bad thing about these uh, wires. The, as they get stiffer, they're great wires to negotiate tough lesions. But once they get uh, past that, it'll go wherever it wants to go. So the importance is to de-escalate once you've made some progress. Yes. So essentially, if you have dealt with that difficult bit of the occlusion, and if you are now in a relatively, that is when you feel the lesion. So with the Nakamura technique, you can feel the lesion. Okay, now we have finished the heartbeat. Let's go back to the Gaia 3 or something. Or if you, let's say, if you enter the distal vessel, with even with these stiffer wires, make sure you exchange it to a softer wire. Uh, don't work on these. Uh, we advise not to work on these stiffer wires because invariably uh, the wire will, will, make forward, will go forward and it will perforate. So the, the Nakamura technique, you sort of rub your fingers together. Is there, what is that technique and, and how does that allow you to feel the tip of the wire? How does that give you feedback? Well, I think it's like a tactile feedback. I think it comes with, uh, I mean, this is what, when, when, when he started talking this in 2015, I used to think he's mad. I mean, like, <laughs> really? Can you feel this lesion? I mean, he used to say, look, the wire is basically end of your finger. You feel the lesion through the wire. That's calcium, that's, that's fibrous. I felt even now, look, I'm, I'm very honest. I don't think so. I'm even like one third what body can, but at least now I know that lesions. In fact, I've shown it to my registrars and my other colleagues. Look, can you feel this is the eye, uh, fibrotic? You could feel it because it just feels different. Calcium feels very different. The moment you calcium is like a real rock. You could feel as you're bringing back and pushing a little bit, you feel that like, a, like you're tapping a rock. That's calcium. I think it just comes by experience. That, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he's, oh, he has done it for 20, 25 years. And obviously his depth and his uh, number of cases is like phenomenal. It'll take, you know, five, 10 years to kind of even come anyway half what he's done. But all I'm kind of saying for the you know, other CG operators who especially were in the beginning phase of learning is that I think these techniques are great and it takes time. This is like a five-day uh, cricket match, not like a T20. Um, so, you know, you just have, you'd miss time and, uh, you know, and effort, it, it'll come by. As I said, not all cases can be done through Japanese techniques. There are cases you have to do uh, hybrid way, but it's, it's a nice technique to learn. Thank you. So next I'll go to the parallel wire. This is probably where I'll be focusing more because they wanted me to kind of highlight more on this. Uh, this is an elegant technique. So essentially the principle behind parallel wire is that let's say you take one wire and you make a progress. And then you find out it has gone subintimal, not uh, into the lumen. Then essentially using that wire to redirect, if you can, it's called wire redirection. If you can't redirect, the best thing is to keep that wire there. Then take a second wire, use the first wire as a landmark, and then you use the second wire going either medial or lateral based on where your wire position is to enter the true lumen. So the first wire acts as a landmark and you use the second wire. Sometimes the second wire also goes subintimal. Then you take the first wire back into uh, ba in a back position, then, then use a second wire as a landmark and then re-enter. So it's basically going in parallel. That's called parallel wire technique. So essentially it is like this so in, uh, schematic. So you take a wire, it's going subintimal, then use that as a landmark, and then you enter the uh, true lumen. <clears throat> So if I show you this case, so this is that uh, uh, taper tip uh, short occlusion, short uh, sort of 20, 25 millimeter occlusion. So I started off with a, with a Gaia 3 here. Uh, you could see I'm kind of heading uh, in the right direction. Then I make a bit more progress. So again, I'm doing every small increment and checking with, uh, with the retrograde injection. And here, and then I push and I clearly go subintimal. Can you appreciate it? I've just gone uh, subintimal here. So I took the wire back into the, into, the, into the lumen, but I couldn't. So what I did was I took a second wire. The second wire is now uh, behind the, second, the first wire. And using as a landmark, I, I pushed a little bit more. And now you see I'm more in the vessel architecture. And then when I, when I advance more, I'm in the true lumen. So this is parallel wire. So using your first wire as a landmark and then entering. This is a case of a... A circumflex CT, again, short occlusion, as you can appreciate this, short occlusion, it's very calcified in a post bypass. So I started with the uh, Gaia 3 here, clearly went subintimal. So Corsair, Gaia 3, completely out of vessel architecture. So what I did was I kept that wire and I used a second wire 
and second wire went the other way. So this is a case where the calcium, this is what calcium does. Calcium basically redirects your wire because it's so stiff, the wire will take the most easy route. Then I use the, uh, that as a landmark and then I turn the, the wire more inward. And you could see here, the, that uh, wire is close to the lumen, but it is still not in the lumen, it is close. But it's better than the, my previous position, which was this. So we'll run this again. So, so can I ask a question, Sandeep? Mm -hmm. So the, the second wire that you choose, so the first one that you use as a landmark was the Gaia third. Mm -hmm. Do you, your second wire, is it always another of the same that you're using or do you look for different properties in the second wire? That's a good point. So if, uh, if the wire has already made a progress, the first wire, which is a Gaia three, I don't mind taking another same wire and, uh, and using that as a landmark. But if I'm having difficulty, like uh, dealing with the calcium, then I go probably with the Miracle 6, 12, or Confianza 12. It all depends on how the, the initial lesion behaves, or initial uh, wire behaves. If it's going nicely, but just going subintimal, all you need is to redirect that. But if you can't redirect, take another wire going in parallel, either the same wire or slightly a stiffer wire. So, so here, I, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was just going to ask, because we, we don't really see, in the currents of the hybrid practice, we don't really see miracles being used that often other than to facilitate um, oh, yeah, ADR. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with parallel wiring, the prop, so a hydrophobic, stiffer tipped wire, mm -hmm. what are the benefits? So essentially, look, you, I've, I've used Miracle, uh, I, I, I don't use as, as much as I used to use it before. See, if I, let's, let's say Gaia 3. Uh, which is your four gram tip wire, okay? And uh, I've come to an interest in CTO where I'm not making any progress with the Gaia 3. And if I want to go up, the next choice obviously is your Confianza, which is 10 and 12 gram. But four to 10 grams, you got a, you go, if you've got an option like a Miracle, which has got six uh, property, which has got better push than the Gaia, but it is not as aggressive as the Confianza, I would go for it because I rather take something less stiffer uh, so that you know you, do, you don't want to be exiting the vessel or causing a dissection. So I use Miracle. I mean, it's, it's a great wire, actually. The only problem with Miracle is it doesn't have the control like your Gaia. Yeah. Um, that, that, yeah, that's a, I think that's how the Gaia was invented, wasn't it? Because Miracle had that, uh, uh, that stiffness, but didn't have the control. That's what happens to confidence. It doesn't have the control, but you have the stiffness. So Miracle 6, actually, it's a nice wire, actually, because it, you, know, you can... You, you can you know, negotiate that wire like the way Gaia, it's well, you know, you don't have to spin that one. You just have to turn the wire, push a little bit because it's got more meat, it will go. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice wire. I mean, I still use it uh, rather than say a lot of the time what, what the teaching now is, okay, you take Gaia 3, if it doesn't work, then go to Confianza CP12. Yeah. But you can easily use Miracle uh, in between and you can make progress. Um, I don't know you can appreciate actually this this is probably the miracle the second wire you could see it's very dark I mean one way you can see miracle is it's very very dark pitch dark um, so yeah so this is the second wire now can you see that now the second wire is a bit more a uh, bit more close to the lumen yeah and then I, I, I push that wire and then uh, and then I'm in the true lumen distally so essentially using the landmark of a first wire and then your you're negotiating the, uh, the other wire. And I was able to finish this case. Um, and this is another great case of parallel wire. So this is, uh, uh, again, Gaia 3 or something. Go subintimal, clearly, way out of my uh, uh, vessel architecture. And uh, what I did was I, um, I tried to negotiate this wire, but it kept going into subintimal. So then I took a second wire, can you see the second wire, which is the top wire now? Yeah. Yeah. You can, see, can you see the second wire, which is the top one, which has already gone to the true lumen there. And I was able to uh, confirm that uh, in, in the PDA and able to finish the case. So this is the, another case uh, of LED occlusion. Now, a lot of the time you see when you do this case, if you show this to any operator, I've just, I've just tested you know, in, in, in meetings. Everyone says, oh, it's a great position. I just push the wire, it'll, it'll be fine. So this even, even we felt the same at the time when, my, when I was doing this case, the wire looks so close. All you have to do is okay, push it, it'll go into the uh, distal LED. But we are wrong because if you look at the true lateral, this is a view which is underutilized uh, in the UK. 
again, all teaching uh, from Dr. Nakamura, he uses this uh, called true lateral. Essentially, you it's in a very extreme view, so radiographers may not like it, but once you start using it, once you start showing them the benefits, they'll also appreciate it and they don't mind giving you this lateral view. So you could see the same wire in the last position, it looks so close. And if I just did a lateral, completely out of the way. So if I push this wire, it'll completely go subintimal. And if it's a sharp wire like confidence, it'll exit the vessel. So here we try to redirect the wire back into the, uh, the top end of the thing. We couldn't, so we took a parallel wire. Can you see the parallel wire now there? So that's the second wire, which is now looking promising. Yeah, you can see it. And then we confirm that in the other view as well to make sure you know we are. You see how nicely it is now. And then you, you have the con you know you have the confidence to push that wire, and we finish the case. So this is a nice teaching case where it looks so deceivingly close, but uh, you're not. How many um, operators do you think use true, uh, true lateral? Is oh, it just, just your almost. center. Yeah, I mean, I think the true lateral is only used in probably if you're undertaking this kind of uh, anti-grade wire escalation or a, or a parallel wire. I mean, even others, you can use it. I mean, um, we use a lot. Me and Mike uh, use a lot. Again, you know, we will learn from Dr. Nakamura. So it, it's a great because it's a, you know, they say you have to do a 90 degree projection between the two views. Yeah. So if you're doing a PA cranial or RA cranial, then if you do an LA cranial, it is not that like 90 degree difference. So best thing is to go true lateral, which gives a good 90 degree difference to say whether, you know, are you in a right direction? Because if you are in a right direction, in both the views, you are the winner. If not, you have to change the, change the course, uh, as I showed in the last case. Yeah. Um, this is another case of a parallel wire. I think uh, you can appreciate here, there's a circumflex CTO. So there are two views here. This is the uh, AP caudal. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the occlusion of the circumflex. Okay. Circumflex CTO is the most difficult. I don't know whether you heard from other operators. Of all the CTOs, the easiest one is the RCA, then LAD, then the circumflex. The reason is circumflex is so ambiguous in terms of the course. No one knows how the vessel goes, whereas LAD and RCA, they have a predicted course. Even if the artery is occluded, if you do the multiple projections, you know where the artery should be. Whereas the circumflex, it, it's completely ambiguous course. So this is a case when I saw it, oh, it's a short occlusion, shouldn't take long for me to open this, okay? So that kind of probably an arrogance uh, in this case. So that's the occlusion, okay? I think short occlusion, probably guy two or three will get in. So took the uh, Corsair Pro and the Fielder XT first. Fielder XT did the initial bit, so took some fine channels probably. As, see, as you could see, I've entered the body of the lesion nicely with the Fielder XTA, but I was not making any more progress after this. So then I switched to Gaia 3, or Gaia 2. So here, see Gaia 2, uh, do you all agree it's close? Looks close. Yeah. <laughs> it looks close, isn't it? But then you look what happens when I push it. When I push it, it's just taking the, and the sub-intimal track. Anyway, so then what I did was I came back, I negotiated the wire the other side. Again, it went sub-intimal to the other branch. Okay, so option over here was either go parallel wire or retrograde. So what I did was I took a parallel wire. Can you see the first wire here is sub-intimal. I tried to redirect this wire into both the branches where it kept going sub-intimal. So if you go back to the last picture, So the first push went subintimal to the lower branch. Then second time I'm trying to renegotiate goes into the subintimal of the other branch. So it's not taking the right right uh, uh, What I did was I took a, a Sasuke, which is your microadulament microcatheter. Um, so the first wire which is down is the Gaia 2 and I've taken a second Gaia wire and now I'm able to kind of redirect that into that uh, upper branch. And I checked in the multiple views. Can you see here now? The, the second wire, which is now inside, not the outside wire, is more, more true lumen. And I was able to push. 
So the I've kept that parallel wire, the the first wire which I need some intimal, I kept it there itself, so that you know I I, I was able to negotiate the second wire. All of you are happy to appreciate this one. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the first wire. Then the Gaia Gaia two on the Sasuke. Uh, checked in the multiple projection, so make sure I'm okay here, and then. I got the confidence that in two views they look close, and then I was able to push it, and then uh, finish the case. Here I didn't use a stent; I used a DCB, which is why it, it may not look great. But the patient's doing very well. This was done a year ago. So we're done with the panel wire. Uh, I've showed you the fine channel tracking, uh, wire escalation, ADR. I'm not going to go because I think you all know about this. Essentially, the the technique behind is deliberately going subintimal, tracking through the subintimal and trying to re-enter off the occlusion uh, using a stingray balloon. Um, and uh, I think uh, that's a cross boss, a stingray. I'm not going to you know, show much of this because uh, you all have seen this in the meetings. Um, so the conventional PCI, a CT angioplasty, so fine channel crossing, wire escalation, parallel wire. Then we have a retrograde wire escalation. So essentially, when you do a retrograde case, the current teaching from the hybrid CTO PCI club is that let's say you come to the distal end of the occlusion from the collateral. So for example, RCA. So you, through a, you go through a subtle channel, subtle uh, LED collateral, come to the distal RCA, and you now are in contact with the distal cap. Now what they do here is they're basically the knuckle a wire and knuckle anti-gradely, knuckle retrogradely connect the two. But what we do with the retrograde wire escalation in, in the Japanese way of doing is you're basically taking exactly like anti-grade wire escalation. You take a retrograde wire escalation. You take a guy three or a confianza or miracle. You're basically trying to negotiate through the occlusion. And we have been so lucky sometimes. For example, this is a case of a, a circumflex uh, CTO again. Okay. Uh, a short occlusion. And can you appreciate there's a collaterals from the RCA? So these are all the epicardial collaterals from the RCA into the circumflex. I tried this case anti-gradely. I could not make any uh, progress because it kept going subintimal. Uh, see here, that's the anti-grade wire with the Gaia 3. It kept going subintimal. So I was not able to um, negotiate this into the, into the distal two lumen. So I went retrograde. Now that's your CO03 wire with the caravel. Um, which went nicely into the distal cap. Now, this is interesting. When I came to the distal cap, I used a Gaia 3 to uh, penetrate the cap and see if I could enter the proximal end of the lesion, but I was going subintimal. Can you see how the wire going into the subintimal space? Yeah. Now, we can't do parallel wire from the retrograde because you can't put two wires. Uh, or a two Corsairs or two Caraval through a retrograde channel. It's impossible and it's dangerous. So if this doesn't work, then you have to renegotiate uh, the wire in a different direction. So essentially what I did was I came back and with the Confianza and poked that uh, calcium, which was redirecting the Gaia wire. So calcium essentially was redirecting the uh, Gaia wire into the subintimal space. So what I did was take a stiffer wire and crack that calcium. So through the calcium, I entered the proximal lesion. Can you see that here? So I didn't have to do any anti-grade work here. All I had to do was retrograde wire escalation from Gaia to Confianza. And then I was able to put the uh, guide liner and then externalize and finish the case. Um, and this is amazing because um, in this case, I had entered through one of the branch and the main branch was still not connected. So I used your Sasuke uh, on the retrograde wire uh, and took a, just a fielder or a cyan blue uh, and just enter the, um, the main vessel. And we're able to do the case. So this is a nice case of a retrograde wire escalation. And we've done quite a few of them now where we track the retrograde uh, channel, enter the body of the CTO from the behind and you negotiate using multiple angulation and various wire and you're in the true lumen uh, without having to have any anti-grade kit. Hmm. And this is another case like that. See this RCS CTO, very blunt. You all agree, it's a blunt occlusion, uh, blunt cap. Um, and here again, try to do anti grade. Uh, the wire kept going subintimal or a branch. So 
at this point, I decided to go retrograde. Can you see the, my anti-grade wire? Yeah. So it's clearly sub-intimal. So I decided to go retrograde. That's your, uh, I think, Sion wire um, uh, on, a, on a caravel. Uh, enter the retrograde. And here again, we could have knuckled, but we decided not to knuckle. We just negotiated. That's a Gaia 3 using the calcium. Can you see the calcium here? So that's a calcium as a vessel. So all we did was use that calcium as a landmark. And, uh, and came up to the proximal uh, part of the RCA. And can you see all I'm just doing is uh, spinning the Gaia wire. And uh, I decided, and I took two, uh, two views, LAO and RAO. And I was very happy that I'm looking close. And all I did was just enter the, you could see that there's a guy three entering the guide. Can you see you entering the guide? So essentially there's no anti-grade kit at all here. All we had just did was retrograde wire escalation into the anti-grade guide and we finished the case. Sandeep, do you use this, the same Gaia 3 or do you find that because that's going to do so much work that perhaps they get some the damage, does it, does it tolerate the whole way through the lesion and re-entry? Um, the good thing about Gaia wire is that it, it maintains the, the tip very well unless you're knuckling or you're damaging the tip by pushing hard, then it gets damaged. Otherwise, it's a great wire. So a lot of the time, I, I tend to do this way. In that case, I couldn't spin the corsa. Ideally, what I would have done here was this. Uh, you're right here. What I would have done was spin the corsair all the way, or spin the corsair all the way to here, and then taken a fielder FC or uh, some more slippery wire to enter the um, uh, guide. But because I couldn't spin the corsa, because the lesion was very calcific here, so I just went with the Gaia 3. I was probably a bit lucky here. But you're right. I think... Uh, Gaia 3 is not the best wire to enter the anti-grade guide or a guide liner. Uh, the Fielder FC is the best wire. For me, the Fielder FC works very well. And some people use Gladius. It's, it's also a nice wire. Uh, but I, I always use Fielder FC. Okay, thank you. Um, so anyway, that case was finished that way. And then the conventional reverse card. So what is conventional reverse card? So the, if I'm taking you from the hybrid to conventional. So in the hybrid, what you do is you knuckle anti-grade, knuckle retrograde, take a balloon, connect the two spaces, take a guideliner and enter the anti-grade uh, guideliner. That's what you do a, in a hybrid CT or PCI. In conventional reverse card, essentially what you're doing is you're not knuckling. You're just basically bringing the wire so close, you only need a two millimeter or 2.5 millimeter balloon to connect it because you're not knuckling. You're basically bringing the guy at three or whatever the wire anti-gradely and second wire, they are so close to each other that you just need a small balloon to connect them. In that way, you're not distorting the vessel anatomy. So for example, this case, um, RCSCTO, we uh, tried to enter anti-gradely, failed, then came back retrogradely. And you could see the, the picture here. Can you see how the close the wire are here? So that's the anti -grade, retrograde wire and that's the anti-grade. We're not knuckle anyone. And you see here, this is a nice picture. Can you see these wires are so close? <clears throat> yeah. So the, in fact, you can't even make out there are two wires here because they're literally on top of each other. They're so close. All we needed to was, um, can you see there's a guide liner there? That, that's the uh, guide liner. Yeah. yeah. And I'm literally taking a small wire, we think probably a filler FC or something and just entered the anti-grade guide. Yeah. Um, so because they're so close, you need just a two, two millimeter or 2.5 millimeter balloon uh, to connect them. And we finished this case uh, with a nice, again, look, the vessel doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too massive. Uh, the architecture is maintained. <clears throat> and this is another case of a conventional reverse card. So again, very blunt occlusion proximally. Um, we have a picardial collaterals. Tried to do, uh, kept going subintimal, came back retrogradely through one of these epicardial collaterals. And you could see the second picture here. Can you see how close the wires are? So that's the anti grade Corsair, and that's your retrograde wire on a Corsair. They're literally very close. And all we had to do was uh, ballooning, and there's a guide liner, and then this goes into the, uh, into the anti grade guide system. And then we were able to finish this case. 
lot of the time the distal vessel looks like this but they all perk up uh once you give some time which is why we don't tend to treat this uh, distally uh, after opening a cto so look i have shown you some very nice cases of a japanese way of doing it it works great but there are cases we have failed in the japanese way so for example this was an rcs cto heavily calcified and then an excellent collateral from the uh, vein graft uh, which was feeding one of the diagonal vessels and in this case um, we tried this uh, anti grade uh, wire escalation uh, japanese way we were tracking the calcium but too calcified i mean we couldn't make any negotiation with the wire or the corsair so we decided to knuckle so this is came back retrogradely um, and then basically knuckled uh, the wire um and here we did something with a carlino technique so essentially the corsair was not going so i essentially injected a dye through the corsair and disrupted this part and then i was able to uh, you could see there's a knuckle can you see the knuckle there and there's knuckle yep and then uh, i'm sure the, you you've seen all these kind of cases in the meetings so i'm not going to show much of these ones because they are the hybrid you know, approach and in the end we were able to uh, connect the two so that's the final case of this one now i would like to end with this last case which is called the true case of best of both worlds okay the case to be on this patient uh oh sorry not this one yeah so this patient uh, very unfortunate so this chap is now in his 70s but when he had his angiogram in 2008 or 9 he was in early in his 60s or late 50s he had a a tight lesion in the led tight lesion in the rca and tight lesion in the circumflex essentially a triple vessel disease none of them were blocked all they were narrowed for some reason at the time he was managed medically i still don't understand till today why he was managed medically then they found out he had lb dysfunction they put an icg which you can see here and decided to just treat him medically now exactly uh, 10 years later in 2018 he came to see me is extremely symptomatic he couldn't walk for, you know 50 yards without having angina and more importantly he was having shocks from his icd because he was having a lot of vt so we decided to re do the angiogram to find out everything is blocked now so lrd which had some tight stenosis completely blocked you can see here an rca blocked circumflex blocked so essentially it's got block all the blocked vessels and no wonder why he was having sort of angina now this case is a is a is a very good case because which one you going to go for first whether you going for rca or the lad rca has got no collaterals or whatever the collaterals are probably coming from the some small septal branches here and the distal lad but to access the distal lad you open the lad and to open the lad you got no option of retrograde here because the collaterals you are getting lad are from small these tiny diagonals and things and the only way to open that lad is an anti grade approach now if you go with this uh, hybrid uh, algorithm i think probably they will do uh, adr here or in knuckle and the risk of adr is that you're going to lose this branch you're going to lose this branch you're going to lose this branch all will be left with an lad fine i think you can you can do it it's not not end of the world you can still do it you sacrifice these branches still the lad will be open then you can use that as a, a retrograde channel for the rca so what i did in this case was we went uh, with the, the conventional cto approach for this so that's the gaia 3 and a corsair and what will happen next next any any guess where the wire goes so in gaia 3 have taken any any guess where this wire will go so we oh uh, can you hear me yeah we we think it'll go sub intimal can you hear us Oh you're going sub intimal. Okay. So you're right. That's what will happen. But you know I was lucky in a way it went into diagonal. The diagonal branch and that's in a true lumen of a diagonal. So what I did was I used that wire and I put a Sasuke on that wire and then used the Sasuke uh, the other lumen of the Sasuke to puncture the cap uh, with the, with the, i think that was the uh, confianza and as you expect i went sub intimal because it's all calcium 
okay then using that as a landmark i take another wire you could see the wire so the first wire down here now is the probably uh, maybe it's guy 3 now i've changed to guy 3 so that's guy 3 which completely subintimal the vessel is here then i've taken another wire and trying to go out into the into the vessel architecture so it's like a classic uh, uh, case of a parallel wire approach then i come into the vessel architecture so i'm good so far and then i push and i am kind of close i check in the other view i am close although not fully into the into the lumen i check in the lateral view see this is a nice case can you see so here i check three views here okay so this is the first view which is the rio cranial where a lot of people will say why don't you push it it'll go okay and then here also say okay look you are close so you just need to uh, push the wire but then if you look at the lateral i am way down so if i push all it will go is it'll go subintimal again so we uh, redirected the wire using that lateral view checked again in three angles and i think that's another parallel wire coming in and uh, and we got that one there and then finally we are in the interior and distally uh, confirmed with the corsair uh, we opened the leds so it's amazing so he came back uh, for rca cto so this was the led now rca blunt occlusion okay very briefly tried antigradely i knew that i'm not going to go much far in this so i decided to go retrograde so I used your very nice uh, co03 wire with uh, with the corsair distal led collateral so collateral from the uh, epicardial collateral came okay used this gaia 3 like usual japanese way but i was getting stuck i was neither the gaia 3 was moving nor the corsair because it was so calcified so i decided to go uh, the hybrid so essentially i knuckled uh, it's amazing because i used a pilot here but pilot didn't work guess what worked any guess gladius ah <laughs> so gladius was the one which worked i think uh, from my experience so far gladius has got more meat in it than the pilot 200 uh, so i think uh, we are using so far i've used uh, three cases of knuckling in gladius in the last 6 uh, months that worked really well so that's a gladius knuckle uh, further knuckle that's to track the corsair more knuckling and then we knuckle more uh, so in fact guys there uh, in this case i had to use uh, uh three gladius because uh, every time i made some progress the the wire was losing its uh, its shape and everything so i had to take another one um so and then then i came antigradely this is a nice case because antigradely i was not able to penetrate with the gaia 3 so i did this and again knuckling uh, i used a uh, Uh, anchor wire in the in the marginal so that's the course of going forward uh, for the knuckling with uh, gladius there <clears throat> and then after that it was a uh, uh, just reverse card um, then that's the guy liner balloon and then finish the case um it's and look at this well this is interesting the the whole epicardial collateral from the led has disappeared once the artery is open So his RCA is open, LED is open, and he's now completely asymptomatic. He does lots of walking um, and uh, without angina. So I decided not to treat that sac because sac is a small vessel, <clears throat> not dominant. And I said to him, it's not worth uh, trying opening that, and especially when I open those two. So he's doing very well. So I think the conclusion here is that conventional CT angioplasty works in most of the cases. Um, and it preserves the arterial anatomy and minimizes the hematoma formation so which means you don't have to bring them back and optimize the stent there are issue with the learning curve i don't disagree with this so when people ask me you know why to spend so much time when you can do hybrid ct pc i said well that's fine i mean uh, that's the way you know if you know if someone's learn fine uh, and there are issue in the sense you need to be kind of uh proctored very closely with this so for example nakamura has come for us now almost 6 7 times when he came in first time he didn't understand the thing about this uh, parallel wire and things
but over time you know it takes so you need someone to literally guide you through for next you know a few years which is why i've got you know a lot of respect for people like you know i think gerald warner does a lot of parallel wine techniques uh, i spoke to him recently on you know, the meeting and tony gerschlick does as well so there are people who do it um, and striking balance is, is very helpful so there are cases you can't do uh, japanese way and you know you identify an upfront and just do knuckling and finish it and there are cases where you can switch in the in between so you made some progress with the japanese way it's not working then you change it to your knuckling it also works Uh, the only downside with that is probably you'd have spent bit more time uh, in completing the case uh, or even we call investment case because you will fail and then you bring them back that's the only downfall of these kind of techniques but it works very well thank you any questions